Megadunes, Colks, and Scablands, oh my! Knowing a bit of these geologic events as you travel the byways of western Montana helps you spy other clues left among the mountain valleys. As the river swirled through the narrow canyons, the velocity of the floodwaters increased. Sediment, gravel, and rock tumbled in the latte-colored whitewater. At Tarkio, the river course snaked through the canyon and slowed just long enough to drop gravel in a giant dune 500 feet above today's riverbed. The rounded rocks are the size of baseballs and footballs. This mega dune is the biggest pile of gravel deposited by the flood. Mega dunes and gulch fills are reminiscent of gravel bars among many western Montana rivers. Rocky holes and circular ponds certainly look out of place. What caused these? Imagine a water vortex, a spinning, abrasive tornado, more powerful than any drill bit augering basins out of bedrock. These are colks, made by hydraulic whirlpools and filled with debris as the floodwaters rushed west toward the ocean. Water moving at 65 miles an hour, almost freeway speed, sped down the path of the Clark Fork River, leaving behind a wounded landscape called Scablands. Small areas of Scabland can be viewed along the banks of today's river in various places. To define mega dunes, you have to think of what are dunes. And dunes are in rivers. They're like ripples in a river that are usually on the order of are like 10 inches high to a few feet high. But in these big floods, like in the draining of Glacial Lake Missoula, mega dunes are 30 feet high, 100 feet high, and up to 400 feet high. So they're like what you see in a stream, but just on a much larger scale. So Glacial Lake Missoula was very deep when it was at its high stand. And it drained very rapidly by the failure of the ice dam. So the water was rushing through the canyons at very high speed, at such a high speed that it was picking up gravel and just carrying it along in the stream. The gravel wasn't bouncing along the bottom. It was being carried throughout the, the flood height. And then as it was snaking through the Clark Fork Canyon, there were places where the um, velocities went down a little bit and they started depositing these dune structures. Well, what you see on these dune structures is they're shallow on the upstream side and they're deep, they're more steep on the downstream side and they're up as much as 500 feet above the river level. So the normal river didn't deposit these things. It must have been a deep flowing flood through the canyons that was over a thousand feet deep. When I started working in the late 90s, and ever since then, there, I'm discovering more and more things to investigate that haven't been investigated previously. Becoming a practiced geological observer promises delightful road trips. Once on the trail of clues echoing through the centuries, you'll be surprised at where the tracks will take you. Snap a photo and post it on Instagram with hashtag Montana Natural History Center.